We're here at New Wine Festival and we are so privileged to have Cy Rogers with us today. So welcome Cy. My privilege, thank you. How is it being here at New Wine? Oh, I think it's a great festival. You know, there's something for everybody, mm -hmm. any age range, lots of great teaching, wonderful worship, presence of the Holy Spirit, moving in His people. Who can't use that and benefit from that? So uh, I'm glad I get to contribute. And it's so great to be here with so many different churches and people from all sorts of different Absolutely, backgrounds. Absolutely, because it just reminds you we're all part of a much bigger picture mm -hmm. and an eternal family. And gatherings like this are always going to hearten that and underscore what God's doing. And, and then he'll speak maybe new insights personally or even corporately that take things to the next level. And a great time of year to do it as well. So I look forward already to 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm so glad not only to contribute, but to get something from me too. Uh, I come as much in need as anybody else. And and uh, so I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, we've been hearing a lot um, this festival about marginalized people, but mm. there are marginalized people that we can um, say are far from us overseas and in, th and in situations like that. But there are marginalized people in our own communities oh, all yes. around us, and sometimes even who live lifestyles that challenge us, mm. um, that we disagree with, and we sometimes feel we need to respond to. Mm. How, as a Christian and as churches, should we respond to those who are around us who are different and who are um, in a marginalized situation? You know, I, I have to say that there are much more complex conversations than time affords us right here and now, obviously. But that said, you know, I don't think it also has to be complicated. I think love your neighbor as yourself is the second commandment. It's a commandment, not a compromise, to value other people. To love someone that is to assign value to them is, uh, is one of the ways the world recognizes that we belong to God. And I always say, if you have to choose between winning an argument versus winning a neighbor, win the neighbor. Sure. Because the Holy Spirit then from that can perhaps maneuver or illumine or guide further conversation and direction in that person's life. So I think we are tempted in our media civilization to always have an opinion and to have to speak out right our opinion about an issue when really it's not even my opinion that matters. It's God's opinion. Yeah. And I've had people say, well, what do you think about the way I live? And I'll say, what I think doesn't quite really matter. It's what do you think God thinks? You know, I've had to pursue his opinion for my life. You can pursue his opinion for yours. He won't be coy. He's not, you know, going to play hard to get. If you're sincere and want to know, what do you think about what I'm doing, God? He'll let you know why. Because he loves you and he cares about your welfare. And so I think that being able to be clear about that as believers means that the dinner party can be enjoying a relationship, not trying to make it a sermon. Right. Can mean that when the kid's home from college and you're a little concerned about what's going on, you can pray behind a closed door, but maybe then you can build a bridge and relate. So obviously there are always caveats to these things. As I said, it can go much more complicated in conversation, but just a little clarity and guidance. Treat your neighbor like you'd like to be treated is always pretty good advice. That's pretty awesome advice indeed. And I think perhaps even there are people within our own churches, mm. um, people maybe even watching this video, who have um, perhaps done things that they're ashamed of or mm. have been exposed to things right. um, that they're ashamed of as well. And th that's left them in a marginalized or vulnerable position. I'm sure you can relate. Oh my goodness, I can. And, and in, in different ways. I relate as a man who comes out of my own history of, of, uh, of abuse and brokenness, feeling very devalued. And, and having been a promiscuous person, you know, I now walk into Christian faith where um, I submit myself to God, but I still felt that I was very stigmatized in the eyes of others because this was many years ago and yet because I had had a revelation of God's love for me and that he valued me he never held my history over my head he never threw it in my face or shamed me this did empower me to rise above um, what I felt might be criticism or the stigma from others that I could um, in time earn trust and, and show people that I was sincere about God and that he was real in my life and, and, and that did help me turn a corner. I also then later realized that maybe people weren't stigmatizing me as much as I thought and maybe my issue was really one of shame that I was projecting an assumption that they're all judging me, they're all critical of me when maybe actually they were quite glad I was courageous and daring to walk with God in their midst knowing it was probably tough for me to do uh, they were probably much more empathetic than I realized and I I was operating out of my worldview of shame. Um, you know, I kind of came from that era of religious culture where Christians aren't supposed to have these kinds of issues. And if you do, you're bad, God's mad. And, and that's not true. 
Uh, if you struggle, you've got reasons, and God is not mad. He is the understanding, empathetic advocate. And I am not bad, I'm just human and vulnerable. And he leads me forward to deal. So out of my own journey, uh, I love to be able to encourage audiences because I know my audiences. And I know that there are people who struggle with histories of abuse and they struggle with pornography and they've done regrettable things or boundaries have been crossed and, and they carry a lot of shame that maybe others aren't projecting on them, but they still feel it within themselves. And to see that lift is a beautiful thing. And even at conferences, at festivals just like this, that opportunity is made available for people to encounter God in those dark corners where they can be so much freer. Um, I hope if you're listening and that's been a concern in your own journey that you will not hesitate to always run to God and let His opinion of you prevail over everybody else's, including your own. It sounds like your experience and the way you've stood up and um, listened to God's opinion and, and shunned that of others has probably been quite pioneering and quite freeing mm. for the people around you. As you say, they were probably watching on thinking, oh, thank goodness someone's, <laughs> you know, standing mm. up and paving the way for others. Well, and what a delight to have been able to do some of that. I don't think I intentioned that. It was just my life unfolding. But, uh, you know, I realize now that people do watch our lives and God does generally raise up someone as an idea, uh, as an example of his good character. Character. Um, I just believed that he really loved me and that so empowered me. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't realize that it was a courageous thing to do. Mm. People have said to me, oh, you're so brave. I didn't think of it in those terms. And I was pretty scared witless a lot. But I think there's where courage steps in, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, not because it was easy, but when it wasn't. And I think that's why when we see people in the world around us who suffer and yet stand, who do not abandon hope in God, who continue to persevere, it inspires all of us because we all know at some point we're going to be challenged in life and if they can make it or they can do it, well, that inspires hope for us as well. So what a joy now that I'm 200 years old <laughs> to be able to look back and to encourage people, and I still do. Uh, uh, I, I don't think I know it all. I certainly don't think I've arrived, but it is nice to encourage people. Sometimes that's all that we need to do uh, is encourage them. Mm -hmm. Well, it's amazing having you here. Thank, well, thank you so you. much for your time. You're welcome.